welcome back folks thanks for joining me again um okay another little winter pattern for us um this one is a zonka pattern it's just a mini zonka now often when we think about zonka patterns and talk about zonka lures we're talking about these great big two three sometimes bigger than that inches long flies which work great and they get all the attraction to them but there are times on uh, pressured lakes um during competition and i find this is a good little competition fly this one um and and days when those fish just simply don't want a big lure a little mini version uh, can winkle out a few extra fish this is also unweighted as well so you can fish this right up against the margins and i've done well with this in lakes like eleanor chigbra black dyke places like that chucking these right up the margins right on the edges and two or three feet of water where everybody else is throwing out a line 50 60 70 feet out just trickle these along the margins and um Things have done well for me. This was actually going to be one of my flies for the national final at Eleanor this year. Um, as it happens on the day, the fish pushed out even further out. Um, during practice, we found fish up in the margins, um, but they seem to move out, I think, because of lack of broke pressure out there on the day. But anyhow, uh, it's worked well for me in practice, not so well on match day, but I still managed to qualify. So the hook in the vice there is a uh, Fesna 310, size 10. Okay, it's sort of a medium to heavy uh, nymph hook which is perfect for this because we're not going to give it any additional weight the thread for this is utc 70 in black so let's get this uh, onto there and uh, we'll get ourselves started as always folks if you enjoy these videos click like click subscribe and feel free to share them about um, any comments any uh, ideas anything you'd like to see please leave them down in the comments section and uh, i'll see what i can do i'm always looking for new ideas so um yeah uh, right the main part of the zonka as we know these rabbit strips rabbit zonka strips you can use um mink i suppose that becomes a minky then but uh yeah this is rabbit zonka strip and we're gonna pop this in i'm actually gonna tie this in right from the beginning this is good for my mind it gives us a nicer finish what i've done is i'm turning this zonka strip upside down this is the end of it here you say i'm turning it upside down i'm just gonna brush this bit forward a little bit and i'm gonna lay that upside down on the hook not quite up at the eye because i don't want it to clog up the uh the top there when i come to finish and just there and i'm going to catch that in and then i'm going to wrap that back keeping that on top of the hook sort of upside down all the way i'm going to take that right back almost to the curve of the hook okay like that and this is just going to give us a nice finish when we come to sort this fly out that's it give it a nice run up and down lovely and what you'll see is when we come to finish this fly off by pulling that over here and over the top it just gives you a much much nicer finish at the back end here without having to cut it without and leave anything loose over the end there it's just this nice lovely even finish and it looks great when we get the body on there as well so bring your thread back down there to the beginning and we're going to add some dubbing in here now this stuff i love this Use this a lot for predator stuff, but also use it a lot for trout as well. This is uh, angel hair. Okay, you get this all sorts of different shapes and colours and blah blah blah. But I think this is a peacock green, so I'm going to take a bit of that and just dub it on my uh, my thread. You won't need an awful lot of this because it does go quite a long way. Just dub it on. It's going to be enough. Nice tight dubbing. A little bit of shimmer, this just gives this fly a little bit of life. It's not much this fly at all. I think it's often the key to a lot of successful flies. It's the, the, the simpler the better. We all love fly time. I love tying complicated flies, complex flies, it all come together. But typically the flies you end up using are the easiest, the simplest to tie with the less materials and the less fuss. And we're just going to start working that up, trying to form a bit of a taper here towards the head. Again, giving ourselves plenty of room up here at the head. So you've got that sort of tapered body up there, plenty of room up here still to finish. And then just simply bring that forward, lay it down over the top of the, the body there, and then find your gap there. Find where that matches up with the eye of the hook. So let's so, say so somewhere about there, I would have said. A little bit wet down just in a minute. And then catch it in. A couple of turns. Excuse me for hitting the uh, camera. 
and just push it back, get a couple of turns of thread in front of it. And then I'm going to trim that off. Finish. Scissors right in there. Nice cut, lovely. And just start to form a head. Nice big tapered head. Covering everything up so we can't see any of that rabbit popping through. Great, and then finish. Lovely. So I say floating line or an intermediate couple of these. They're not big flies, so you can get away with fishing a couple of these together. And we're just going to nice drop of varnish on here. And I would give this coat of this, I would give this two coats of varnish on the head of this. Because uh, I want it to be fairly robust. I'm going to be pulling it through weed and over stones and all sorts. Now you're going to get your dubbing brush. Okay, and this is where it comes to life. I start teasing that. Really start mixing that together. Love this bit when I'm doing flies. The bit where you start to really scruff them up. I just think that's a little bit long there, so I'm just gonna. You think that's just coming out a little bit long, or the fur's a little bit too thick, or whatever you want. Just give it a little. Never cut them. You never look right when you cut them. There we go. You could add some eyes onto this, I suppose. You could put uh, you know, a couple of bits of goose bite or something on there onto the top of them, but. Well, I'm not going to say it doesn't need it. Trigger points are always good on flies, but I think that as it is, is well, I know that as it is, well, it doesn't look like much. It's actually a very, very, very less successful little fly, that. Um, and it's worth having a few in your box, especially when they're seeing all the big stuff, even when there's a few fry knocking around as well. But uh, coloured coloured lakes, coloured water, and you're typically going to get a lot of coloured water um, at this time of year with floods and rains, etc., etc. Um Black is a colour to go, and we know how good black and green is. So yeah, these I would typically fish these on a on a floater right at the margins or on a, on a, a an intermediate, something like a slime line, a clear intermediate, whether a slow or a fast intermediate. Um, pop them out and just twiddle them back and mess around with them. And you'll be surprised how these manage to winkle out a few fish when other other flies are struggling, other folks are struggling. But again, it's just a little mini zonka variation, but it's lovely. When it gets wet in the water, it looks superb, and the fish love it. So I hope you enjoyed that. Give it a go, give it a tie-up, put a couple in your box, and um, give them a whirl and see what happens. I think you'll be nice and surprised. Just for that, folks, thanks very much, and I'll catch up with you soon. Bye-bye.